Hey guys, Telegram Sam here. Uh, so this week's shout out uh, is going to be to JC from the flip side vinyl community with JC. This dude, I don't know how this dude finds <laughs> the time and energy, but he is constantly uploading videos. If he doesn't do at least once a day, sometimes he do mul multiple uploads a day. Um, yeah, and he does everything from uh, VCLT unboxings, he does a lot of MoFi unboxings, um, he was like one of the first channels that I saw talk about um, the RSD list and um, all of the, some of the albums that were going to be on that. Um, yeah, this dude's very consistent and he also has a very, you know, eclectic uh, taste, so he talks literally about everything from jazz, hair metal, uh, Nick Cave and Bad Seeds, like a little bit of everything he talks about and he's just one of those um, channels that I just always watch and like his videos are, are not really that long so like if you just want to like catch a video while you're on your like 10 minute break at work um, his videos are usually average around like 5 minutes. I, I think I've only seen a couple videos where he's done more than 10 minutes. Um, but yeah, he's great. I'll link his channel down below if you want to go check him out if you don't know about him yet. So give him some love. Um, so yeah, I have another vinyl pickups for you today. Um, I've gone a little bit wild these last couple of weeks. Um, and I have about 17 vinyls to talk about. Um, so yeah, let's get started. First off, I have this classic Marvin Gaye, What's Going On. Um, this was a 2020 exclusive Target reissue. This originally came out in 1971. This was also produced by Marvin. And it's interesting because I was reading like the backstory behind this album and how this was the first album he did after his um, his co-singer in his early years of singing, um, Tammy Terrell, died of brain cancer. And plus this was during the depths of his um, drug addiction to cocaine and his IRS troubles and um, he was actually going to uh, commit suicide but Barry Gordy's father stepped in um, right before he was about to do it and ultimately saved his life and uh, he ended up coming up with this record and you know after witnessing the civil rights movement for the last 10 years um, he just wrote this great masterpiece, and it's just so good, and I'm so glad I finally have it now. Um, it also came on this really cool translucent green vinyl on that, that awesome yellow and brown label. The next, um, these next couple ones I got from Everyday Music about a week ago. Um, this is Freedom of Choice by Devo. I did not have any Devo, so had to get this. This has like a couple of their classic song songs on it. You know, it has Whip It and uh, Girl You Want. I love that song. Um, one of the venues I used to go to all the time when we used to be able to go to concerts would play the Girl You Want during like while the band was setting up. So every time I hear that song, I'm always like, oh, let's get this concert started. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a 2020 reissue. This originally came out in um, 1980. This was their third album. Uh, yeah, just it's killer. It's killer synth, new wave, pop, rock. Um, it also came on this great white vinyl. Love me some white vinyl. I think it's just so cool and chic. This next one, I think I saw Ryan Kidd talk about this band before. Yeah, because I remember I was watching a video he did, and he was talking about the, about this band. I was like, oh, um, next time I'm at the record store, I'll look out for their stuff. And literally, the next day I went to the record store in their new arrival section. It's like their entire discography was there and someone got rid of their Discharge collection. Um, unfortunately, I looked through all of them and they're all like pretty scratched, scratched up. This is probably the least scratched <laughs> of all of them. Um, yeah, this is Grave New, Grave New World by Discharge. Um, this is an original um, 1986 U.S. press. Um, this originally came out in 1986. Um, yeah, it's it's weird because this album 
was a completely left turn for them. Dis Discharge is a pretty hardcore punk band, but this was them kind of doing their their version of like glam rock, um, and this was pretty widely um, hated by a lot of critics and their fans, and I was reading uh, this thing on Wikipedia about how when they were touring for this album, and when they were in DC, HR from Bad Brains uh, poured ice on them <laughs> while they were playing. Um, so yeah, they actually broke up after they did the tour for this and uh, didn't reform until 1990. Um, but I don't think it's that bad. Like the the vocals, I'm, I'm definitely not really that into. Um, but the instrumentation on it is really good. Um, I love the guitar playing on it. Um, it's just on this classic black vinyl with this profile label. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to try and find more more of their stuff that won't be so scratched. Hopefully, because um, yeah, it's definitely interesting, and I like their style. Um, next we got Robert Gordon with Link Ray. Um, this originally came out in 1977. This is an original U.S. first pressing. Um, I love Robert Gordon. He's, he was definitely kind of like the precursor to the whole 1980s rockabilly, psychobilly revival. Um, he was mainly doing a lot of this stuff in the 70s before it was like cool again. And plus it's just cool to hear Link Ray play on anything. Here's Robert and Link Ray on the back. Um, yeah, this is just classic psychobilly, rockabilly. Um, he does a couple of covers of Summertime Blues, um, Sweet Surrender, um, Is This the Way, and of course Link Ray shredding on guitar. Um, and then this is just black vinyl with the private stock label. Then next we got another classic. This is Bowie's Diamond Dogs. Um, yeah, love this album. Um, this is a. This originally came out in 1974, but this particular one is a 2017 reissue. Um, this was the first record Bowie did after um, the Spire, his Spires from Mars band kind of disbanded. This was like his first like kind of solo album. Um, but yeah, I love this album. This has the song Rebel Rebel on it, Sweet Thing, Diamond Dogs, um, uh, Big Brother, love that song. Yeah, this is just such a classic Bowie and it comes this great gatefold. And I love the label for this one too. Um, but yeah, if any of you have the original of this, I'm wondering if it also came with because you know it's supposed to be an RC label but it says Bowie instead of RCA so if any of you who have the originals of these did that also come with that cool label because I just love the idea so let me know the next I just got this um, online uh, this is um, the Black Keys Thick Freakness. Um, this originally came out in 2003. This is their um, their second album. Uh, this is a 2015 reissue. Um, yeah, the, I'm wearing my Black Keys Let's Rock shirt. This was actually the last concert I got to see before everything shut down. Um, I think I saw them in like mid-November 2019 and then you know, a couple months later. Um, everything was halted, so uh, it's kind of bittersweet to be wearing this. Um, but yeah, this is a great record. It's definitely, you know, gr their typical garage, hard rock, blues sound. And uh, most of the album was recorded in uh, the drummer and producer um, Patrick uh, Carney's basement in a 14-hour session, so that's like pretty impressive. Um, but I was kind of disappointed with this pressing because, um, you guys the record. This is the record with the fat possum label. Um, but yeah, the um, you know the stylus hole was like too small and I couldn't get it onto my record player. So I kind of had to did, do some like surgery to it and try to like put a pen in there and try to widen it a little bit, but it still went like completely flat on my turntable. So that was kind of disappointing. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have any tips or tricks on trying to fix that. Um, because yeah, it still doesn't 
like completely flat and it was kind of wobbly the entire time it was playing. Um, so yeah, that kind of sucks, but I don't want to return it just for that. So yeah, if you guys have any ways to help that, that would be awesome. Let me know. Um, so yeah, this morning I ended up going to Tomorrow Records again and went a little bit crazy. <laughs> um, usually I'll give myself like a 50 to $75 allowance um, when I go shopping there, but there's just too many good things that I just couldn't leave behind. And plus, you know, I got raised recently at work and I got my stimulus check and my tax return. So I was like, just, just treat yourself. It's okay. Treat yourself. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got about, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten records there and spent about a little over $200. But it's all stuff I've been wanting for a while and stuff I just, yeah, I just could not live without. So, <laughs> um, first things first, this is really, really cool. Um, this is Ken Kesey's The Acid Test. So for those of you who don't know, Ken Kesey um, was a popular author during the 60s and 70s. Actually, this tattoo on my chest is from his book, One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, this is the first sentence that's in that book. Love that book, changed my life, love him as a writer. Um, but yeah, this was originally released in 1966. Um, so in the 50s and early 60s, Ken Kesey was a nurse at various hop hospitals in Oregon. Um, and in the early 60s, he worked at a VA hospital, um, which is one of the hospitals the government chose to do the MK Ultra test, which was the test on like how LSD altered in uh, people's minds and how it worked on the human psyche essentially and he ended up taking part in that and he just became obsessed with acid and he was good friends with Timothy Leary who was also you know part of the pro acid movement during the mid to late 60s um, so this was uh, was recorded during one of his sugar sessions um, which was essentially just an acid party um, but yeah, this was recorded in 1966. This also features the Grateful Dead kind of performing background music to Ken Kesey's kind of like spoken word um, and Ken Babb's spoken word poetry and plus there's like harmonicas on it and yeah, it's just an interesting um, kind of historical fun thing. And yeah, this was taken during a 14 hour acid trip. So there's actually a 14 hour long version of this somewhere. I'd actually be interested in hearing that. Um, but yeah, this is just a, a short snippet of it. Um, but yeah, this is actually a 2020 Jackpot reissue. Um, Jackpot is a local um, record store here. And they also do a lot of reissues on a lot of um, kind of obscure things. And it came on this really cool pink record with the purple label. Love that. And then next we got Jenny, <laughs> Jenny, <laughs> Johnny Thunder's Bootleg and the Bootleggers. Um, so yeah, this was, this is an original UK 1991st pressing. Um, this is just some songs that were recorded live around the world between 1985 and 1989. He does In Cold Blood, um, covers of Hit the Road Jack and I'm Not Your Stepping Stone, Personality Crisis, Little Queenie, pretty much like all of his great solo stuff on here. Um, and you know, he is part of the New York Dolls, so he's definitely, you know, punk, hard rock. Uh, and it came on this great translucent yellow, super cool, love me some color translucent vinyl, excuse me, maybe. Next we got another great punk live album. This is um, Live at Shepperton 1980, The Damned. I don't have any of the damned stuff yet, which is such a disgrace on my part. Um, they're just such a, a great early UK punk rock band. Um, but yeah, this originally came out in 1982. This is a UK 1985 reissue. Um, this was their first official live album and it was also performed um, from members of the Damned fan club so you can definitely hear the audience getting super psyched during this which is so awesome. Um, but yeah, they have Love Song on here, I Just Can't Be Happy Today. 
um, smash up, smash it parts one and two, new rows. Um, yeah, this, this sounds awesome. I, I was able to have time to listen to this after I got it back from the record store. It's, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, and it just came on this black vinyl with this big beat. I don't know if you can see that. Gray label. Nothing too fancy there. Oh, and this next one I am so excited about. This is definitely one of my grails. Um, this is an original um, 1970 uh, Back in the USA by MC5. This was their first um, studio album. Uh, and this was actually one of Lemmy from Motorhead's favorite albums. So if Lemmy loves it, you know you're going to love it. Uh, but yeah, the MC5 are just such an important part of, you know, hard rock, punk rock, that whole late 60s Detroit sound. Um, yeah, and it has, they did covers of Tutti Fruity on here. Um, and also, you know, Back in the USA was a Chuck Berry song. And you also have High School. I freaking love that song. Uh, this is just such a grail. And plus, the only MC5 I had before this was just a comp of some of their recordings that was released in I think 2015 so it's nice to actually have one of their original albums it just came on this um, classic red white green Atlantic label Next we got, I think, again, I saw Ryan Kidd talking about this, um, but this is um, uh, the Stingrays um, Live Retaliation. Um, this is a UK first pressing. This came out in 1985, um, and it was recorded at King's Cross in 1984. Um, this is kind of described as London, uh, not London. <laughs> Uh, you know, garage rock, psychobilly, punk. Uh, I haven't gotten a chance to listen to this yet, but I, I feel like I've definitely heard Ryan Kidd talk about them and say how great they are. So anything he talks about, I'll trust. He's kind of like um, Dylan from Noble Records. I'll listen to anything those two guys suggest. So super excited to hear that. It just came on this, um, this cool media burn label. It also has the leather face from uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre in the in the corner over there, so that's pretty cool. It's one of my favorite um, horror movies. And then this is kind of a blind buy. I, I've heard nothing from these ladies, but um, this is Love Unlimited in Heat. I don't know, I just saw this in the record store, and they just look so badass and cool. And I love the... Um, the back and it has the picture of them but they're kind of like in flames it's so cool and it was like only seven bucks but um i guess um these ladies were the backup um vocals um for barry white they you know did all of their his recordings and also went on tour with him and all the songs on here are written by barry white besides one i think and it was produced and arranged by barry white so this was definitely like his project um, so yeah, I'm excited to hear what this is about. Um, on Discogs, it kind of said it was, you know, funk, soul, and disco, so we'll see. I'm really excited to hear that. And that one just came on black vinyl as well. And I've never seen this label before, but this is sort of a um, 20th century label. Never seen that one before. It's pretty cool. Uh, next, we got a classic. Um, I'm so excited to have a copy of this. This is um, Maggot Brain by Funkadelic. <sighs> this album is just so good. This is like the quintessential funk, psychedelic rock album. It's just everyone needs to have this. I don't care what kind of music you listen to. This will just melt your brain. It's so good. Um, but yeah, this uh, was originally released in 1971. This is the third Funkadelic album. Um, this is a German reissue. Um, didn't, I didn't see a year anywhere, but it's probably within the last couple of years or so. Um, but God, the Eddie Hazel's guitar solo on, Mag on the 
the title track Maggot Brain is just so good. It's it's some of the best electric guitar I've ever heard. And I was reading somewhere that um, uh, George Clinton, before recording that song, told him, pretend like someone just told you your mother died and, pl and play it. Like the only way you can release your emotions is through your guitar. And they did it in one take and it's just so, just, so good. Um, yeah, and the song, um, where is it? Can You Get to That? I love that song. Can you get? I want to know. That song's so fun and upbeat and just killer. Um, I just hate how they have, you know, this writing on the back, but it's so hard to read because the writing, like, matches the background, but this is just such an important record and so seminal to the funk, hard rock sound and just... There's there's too much to say about this album. <laughs> just buy it if you don't already have it. Um, and it came on just this classic black, this cool westbound, upside down, westbound label. And then we got another great funk album. Um, this is Betty Davis's debut album, Betty Davis. Um, she is just a queen. This originally came out in 1973. Um, and this one in particular is a 2018 reissue. I was listening to this while I was putting a face on for this. And God, this is just nasty in like the best way possible. It's just so raw and you know, it's obviously funky, but it's also very hard rock. And most of it on here is, is super raw funk, but the last song, um, in the meantime, it's kind of like a very easy listening soul R&B song, so it's like this nice little cherry on top of the funk Sunday. <laughs> uh, but um, Neil Schoen played guitar on this, so that's pretty cool, and the Pointer Sisters also did the backup vocals on this, but yeah, this is just so good. I definitely want her to get her second album. She is just a queen. And this this one also came with a, a booklet that just talks about Betty Davis and you know her life and her music and you know obviously her her marriage to Miles Davis and how he helped her kind of come up with her her sound and her style and all that stuff. So yeah I just cannot recommend that enough. Um, just came on this black label with her name on it. Killer. The next we got some jazz. Um, I know how like, I think it was my second video, I did the 2021 20, um, vinyl tag, how I talked about how I wanted to get more jazz. Um, I haven't picked up jazz in a really long time, but I saw this at the record store and I was just like, you know, it's 15 bucks and plus it was sealed when I got it, so kind of broke my heart having to break a seal on this, but um, this is Nucleus by Son Sonny Rollins. He is just a killer tenor, tenor saxophone player. Um, yeah, this is a U.S. first press and this is described as, um, you know, sort of jazz funk, soul jazz, post bop. It's really interesting because you know he's been releasing stuff since the early 50s and I love hearing kind of you know, jazz musicians from then releasing stuff in the in the 70s because it's you know you hearing the evolution of how the their sound has changed and how you know music in general has changed and how they try to add all of that into their sound like you know Miles Davis's Bitches Brew is an obvious great example of that so I'm interested to see what this sounds like um, but yeah, this is just on black vinyl with this orange milestone label. And then last but not least, we have this great rap album. These were super, super hard to find. I think not until recently were these reissued. Um, but this is Bizarre Ride 2, The Far Side by The Far Side. If you don't know who Farsight is, um, they were um, a late 80s, early 90s rap group. Um, 
but yeah, they're they're just so killer. Um, you know, you hear people talk about you know Wu Tang Clan, Tribe Called Quest, NWA, and the fact that um, the Far Side aren't thrown into that mix is honestly a shame. Um, they definitely weren't as hard as you know NWA or Wu Tang Clan. They kind of had like um, you know more lighthearted and jokey lyrics and the sound to them. Um, but yeah, this is. Um, their 1992 album, this is a 2017 reissue, uh, but yeah, it has four members, Slim Kid 3, Imani, Booty Brown, and Fat Lip, <laughs> but yeah, this is just, like, I know most people probably don't know about this album, but definitely check them out on Spotify or YouTube, they're just so killer if you want to get into that, you know, early 90s LA sound, um, that is an NWA or anyone affiliated, um, but yeah, it came on two uh, LPs. One is this really cool blue translucent. And the other one is this yellow translucent. Oh, that just came out. But yeah, so excited to listen to this. So, so excited. I've only ever heard their stuff on YouTube and Spotify, so to actually have a physical version of their album is so cool. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Um, hope you found something that you can hopefully listen to later or check out your local record store the next time you go there. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.